We are on problem number 10. Let's see, on page 49. Stacy noted that she is both the 12th tallest and the 12th shortest student in her class. Let me write 12th down. She's the 12th tallest and shortest. If everyone in the class is a different height, how many students are there in the class? And these are these are the type of questions that I just like to make sure that I'm not, you know, miscounting, right? So she's the twelfth tallest. So what does that mean? That means that there are eleven people taller than her, right? So let's say, you know, from shortest to tallest. So this is Stacy right here. This is Stacy. And so if she is the twelfth tallest, so let, let me let me put it this way. If I said that she was the if she was the first tallest, that means there's no one taller than her. If she's the second tallest, that means there's one person taller than her. If she's the third tallest, that means there's two people taller than her. And likewise, if she's the twelfth tallest, that means that there are eleven people taller. Eleven taller. Eleven taller. Similarly, if she's the twelfth shortest, well that mean that must mean that there are eleven shorter than her. So this is really just making sure that you kind of parse the words correctly and count properly. So if there's eleven shorter, eleven taller, and then there's Stacy, well that's twenty two plus her, there's twenty three students in the class. And this is just to make sure that you know you don't say, oh, twelve taller, twelve shorter, and say twenty five or something like that, or you know. It's just to confuse you, really, I think. Okay, problem number 11. Image, clear image, invert colors. Problem number 11. I'll switch colors. 11. The quadratic function g is given by, well, this is just the general way people write quadratic functions, is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a and c are negative constants. a and c are negative, right? Negative constants. Which of the following could be the graph of g? So I'm not going to even look at the choices. I'll just show you how I would, you know, if someone didn't even give me any choices and say, well, if a and c are less than 0, what's this going to look like? So let's draw the x and y. So let's say that that is the x-axis. Actually, um, I drew this in. Let me edit, undo, edit, undo. OK, so let me draw the x-axis. You might realize pretty soon why I drew it. I have to redo it. That's the y-axis. All right, x, y. All right. So we know that a and c are negative. So c is the y-intercept, right? When x is equal to 0, we're just left with g of x is equal to c. So c is the y-intercept. So if c is less than 0, we know that the y-intercept is going to be below the x-axis. It's going to be a negative number. So we know that you know this is going to be this is c. It's where the graph intersects the y-axis. We also know it's going to be symmetric around the y-axis because um, we haven't really, well, actually, we, we don't know for sure that it's going to be symmetric around the y-axis. And I, I, could, I could go uh, into that in more detail, but I won't. But that's all we need to know. It, it depends what the bx, this term is. But let's just ignore that for now. And then we know that a is negative. So in general, it's, you might want to prove it to yourself. You know, the graph of y equals x squared, that opens up like this. And the graph of y is equal to minus x squared, it goes down like that, right? So a possible graph for this would look like this. Right? The important thing is it has to be a, these are the two things that you know when they tell you a and c is negative. It's going to be a graph that opens downwards. And it's going to intersect the y-intercept. It's going to it's going to intersect the y-axis, but in the negative area, or you know below the x-axis. A, a legitimate graph also would have looked like this. It could have also looked like this. It didn't actually have to be symmetric around. It depends what this bx term does. But if we look at the choices, the only choice that intercepts the y-axis. Below the x-axis, or in the you know at a negative y-intercept, and opens down is choice A. I mean, there's only three choices that open down, and only choice A intercepts in the negative area. So the answer is A. It actually looks eerily like what I drew just out of the blue. Next question. 
problem number 12. OK, so they drew a square. And I will draw a square, because they drew a square. And they say, this is A, this is B, this is C, D. And this is P, this is Q, and out here is R. I don't know where this problem is going, but it looks interesting. Figure not drawn to scale, of course. In the figure above, ABCD is a rectangle, with BC is equal to 4. Okay, BC is equal to 4. AB is equal to 6. PQ and R are different points on a line, not shown, that is parallel to AD. So PQ and R are apparently all on the same line. That is parallel to AD. Well, I guess that is the way they drew it. So let me let me erase. So let's let's just say Q. So this let's say this is Q. That R is down here, right? This isn't R. That's a. So they're all on the same line, and they, they say the line isn't shown, but it's parallel. It's parallel to AD. So let me draw that line. So that line looks something like this. Draw it straight. Okay. And on that line, you have P, P, Q, and R, and it is parallel to AD. Good enough. It is parallel to AD. Points P and Q are symmetric about line AB. Points P and Q are symmetric about line AB. OK, so that means that P and Q are equidistant from this line. So that means that, that, means that this distance is equal to this distance. When they say P and Q are symmetric around AB, you can almost pretend like AB is a mirror right here, and P and Q are the mirror images of each other. Good enough. And then it also says P and Q are symmetric about line AB, and points Q and R are symmetric around line CD. So Q and R are symmetric around line CD. So we also know that this distance is equal to this distance. Good enough. What is the length? What is the length of P R? What is the length of PR? This is fascinating. So let's say that this length right here, let me do it in yellow, this length is x, right? Then what is this green length going to be? Well, this green length right here is going to be 4 minus x. 4 minus x. How did I know it's 4 minus x? Well, this distance up here is 4. This distance up here is 4. So if this is x, this is 4 minus x. Well, then, then that this distance right here is also going to be 4 minus x. Well, and if this yellow distance is x, then we also know that this distance is x. So the distance from p to r is going to be the sum of all of these, right? x plus x plus 4 minus x plus 4 minus x. And I think you see where this is going. It's x plus x plus 4 minus x plus 4 minus x. These x's all cancel out, right? 2x minus 2x. And we're just left with 8. And that's our answer, b. And you could have tried out now. I mean, you could have assumed q was right in the middle and it would have worked out the same. But this is, you know, you know for sure that the answer is 8. Next problem. Image clear. Invert. I don't know if I'll have time for this. The price, oh, I get nervous when I'm running out of time. So I'm going to do this in the